Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Uh, they, they ended up pretty well. Uh, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second. Uh, but it, it really does, does show you, okay, uh, with one headline last night, okay, and again, I record the video usually, I usually record the video around 4, 45, 5 o'clock uh, Eastern time, and you see a lot of uh, events and a lot of news stories kind of break after the fact. Um, and last night you had Trump talking about that, hey, you know what, we should really uh, kind of buckle up, right, kind of buckle in, and what we thought we had under control in the month of January, well, now it's not under control anymore, and now we have a little bit of a problem. Um, you know, they, th they threw those figures last night that, you know, you could exceed quarter of a million deaths, okay? Uh, and again, when you look at the global population, it doesn't seem that bad. But when you think of a quarter of a million people dying, it's still a lot. It doesn't make a difference out of how many people are walking the earth. It's still a lot of people. Um, and the market, again, really showed how two things. How we know that no bearish sentiment, again, I don't want to use the word bear market, but we kind of know how no bearish sentiment goes straight down. Obviously, we've had a pretty good rally uh, in the last four or five days. And we also know, and we're also confirming the, the other half of the situation, how one headline, okay, how one uh, piece of news, materialistic fact, or whatever the case may be, can easily shake the trees of traders that thought this was coming to an end, thought, quote unquote, this is a generational bottom. And you could cl clearly see how, the, again, the shoot first, ask questions crowd came in today very, very aggressively. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I thought today, okay, uh, at morning strategy, I said to say, well, you know, the initial value, again, on any gap down, if you've been watching these videos for a while, you kind of know on any gap down, the initial values to the upside, which we saw, right? We, we saw a couple of things. And then we started seeing, and then we started seeing how the market was, was having problems continuate, uh, con with continuation for about an hour and a half, $2. And I noted today for the first uh, couple of hours, it was really uh, a cash flow session, okay? Uh, that's kind of basically what I wanted today, uh, at least in the morning. I, I, I thought this was a kind of a scenario that I wanted to see if the bulls can negate this type of news. Um, but I also kind of knew in the back of my mind how important this afternoon session was. And we started, and if we started confirming some downward prices of names that were very, very aggressively kind of traded, okay, over the last couple of months, like NVIDIA's of the world, uh, like your Apple's of the world, like your Boeing's of the world, that had, you know, a big cloud over them, whether they were hated for Tesla's sake or hated for the fact that Boeing represents, well, making of airplanes and nobody's traveling. Um, so we, we kind of wanted to see that. And the most important part of today's day was, and again, we'll, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second, um, the levels that we talked about last night, and we've been talking about from the macro point of view, they kind of came into play. So when you saw last night, we started talking about any close below the 10 day moving average was going to be bad, okay? Well, the 10 day moving average on the queues was 182.70. We closed at 182.30. Now, again, do you want to split hairs on the bullish side? You can turn around and say, well, we, we closed on the 10 day moving average. The bear side says, well, we closed below the 10 day moving average. Again, you're splitting hairs. This is not the important part. The important part is if the bears tomorrow confirm today's prices and start building below the 180.86 area, then we're going to go down. We're going to, we're going to start moving down. And again, is it going to go down in a straight line? Is it going to go down in, in one candle? Absolutely not. Uh, there's going to be plenty of days in between. You're going to get up, down, up, down, up, down. But again, remember, and, and, and this is, these, are, these are technical analysis facts. Stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. That's why when we got rejected yesterday, we talked about the bullish nature of the 192.75 area going to 95. It did that. 
It got rejected in the 95. The Bulls needed to reclaim that 95. Obviously, the Trump news really, uh, the Trump headline last night really uh, lit the fuse. It really, really lit the fuse, and it really showed how when the lights went on, the cockroaches scattered, and that's exactly what we saw today. So if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, when you have to believe in the theory that stocks trade in demand to demand, that's the whole point of the whole PS60 theory. So we went from supply to demand to demand. Now, if we confirm tomorrow's prices, and again, again, guys, I know there's a lot of new traders out there, permables, close your ears, or you might want to leave the room. Okay, I'll give you a second, right? If we confirm below, below today's prices, right, and really start building below uh, that 180, 80s level, we're going to start a very, very aggressive cycle. And again, if you are uh, a long biased trader, uh, you better know what the hell you're doing or else you're going to get uh, really run over. But again, let's not put the cart in front of the horse yet. We need to see price action confirm. Again, if we gap way below, you know, if we start gapping below uh, today's prices, then again, the game shifts a little bit. Then you're looking for opening ranges. You're looking for 60 minute channel confirmation. But again, the sentiment stays uh, the same. Um, what I like about today's session was, um, even though it was very aggressive to the downside, I, I kind of liked the action, okay? I, I really did like the action. It wasn't to the point of that I said, wow, this is the greatest day of all time. But this is one of the more manageable days that, especially when we saw, when we were in complete cash mode, uh, cash flow mode, excuse me, in the morning session, you know, you had doing the videos of the world, uh, I scouted some of the video, well, you know, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. What I like, what I saw about it was, they were pretty clean, right? They were pretty clean moves. Um, you know, they put in the low, they rallied, they put in the second entry, and they gave you cash flow. They gave you good cash flow. The market, you know, attempted the rally a couple of times, and the next thing you know, uh, they just gassed out. They gassed out, and some pretty big uh, macro numbers came into play, including Tesla. You guys remember we were talking about Tesla for a couple of days in a row now, video after video after video, that 491 macro, 491 macro, 491 macro, right? 491 macro. Well, it's, you know, Tesla went down to 475 today. Well, again, we'll show the pivots uh, in a second. So I, I think if you are a trader, right, if you are a trader, uh, especially in uh, the intraday ranks, I, I think you're going to get a lot of value most days. You, you really will. And, and we, we say this all the time, um, depending on what you trade. Again, I, I'm going to stick to the meat and potatoes every single day, the same nine, 10 stocks that I trade, the same ones, you know, Apple, Facebook, uh, Netflix, Tesla, Tesla's the best stock ever, uh, BYND, Alibaba, you know, uh, Amazon, even Boeing, even Boeing, you know, again, Boeing, three days in a row I traded Boeing, excuse me, I traded Boeing yesterday, three out of the last four days I traded Boeing, big move, move on Boeing as well today. So I, I think if you trade these names, you're going to get really good two-way action, okay? If you trade random names, just understand, guys, there is no breakouts, right? There's stocks that are strong, uh, in a bearish tape that represent, you know, again, a theme. You have your masks plays, your, um, you know, your Corona headline plays, you know, wh whatever the case may be, you'll, you'll get, you'll get value. Like today, for example, we saw uh, APT, you know, call buyers coming in all over the place, the, the, the 15s, the 16 calls. And again, you're going to get moves like this. And again, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But again, like I said in the previous video, stick to what you know, okay? Don't stick to what somebody else is comfortable with. Stick to what you know. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. The name of the game is safety. The name of the game is common sense and waiting for your uh, process to get a spotlight and then attacking it with uh, extreme cautiousness, but yet uh, with extreme um, confidence. And that's the name of the game. So uh, let's talk about today's day. Again, you had some moves uh, to the upside. You had some moves to the downside. Obviously, uh, the Tesla and Boeing pivots, especially for your option players in the webinar. Congratulations. Monster moves. Really, really monster moves. So let's talk about them. Uh, Vanda, we had this from last night's video. I, I wasn't even watching it. I saw it ran up like like 25 cents. Uh, 1040 needs to build. Again, nothing nothing really there. Uh, again, this is the whole point of like random stocks, putting in random moves. So it took out the 1040, went to uh, 1067, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. So uh, let's talk about this. Uh, NVAX, I still like this area. Uh, 1490, 15 needs to build. Obviously, never got there. Uh, Cake, again, Cake is one of those stocks, uh, again, for the exception of beta that you can trade every day, Pretty much every other stock is most likely going to be a swing position or 
uh, a position for multiple days, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to classify it. So I, I like this cake setup. Um, I think it goes lower again. I think they stopped paying rent on like 230 stores. We talked about it last night. Uh, cake 16 has, you know, it's been a strong daily support for builds below. It can start to flush again. It's not going to be the biggest move in one day, but again, cake did exactly what it needed to do. It lost the last three, four days confirmed, and now it's going lower. So now you're talking about, you know, you're probably going to get a drift here in the next several days uh, to this 1450 level. And once it confirms 1450, again, you have a lot of room down, especially if we continue to lengthen, right, uh, of the whole stay at home uh, social distancing program. Again, the longer these businesses are closed, unfortunately, to say it's going to put a dent in the economy, it's going to put a dent. Uh, in everything, you know, absolutely everything. But again, it, unfortunately, it is the world uh, that we live in. So uh, Cape, again, for all you guys who are swinging the stock, it looks good. It looks really, really good to the downside. Um, so 491 huge, right? 491 huge. We'll get back to 491 in a second, right? We'll get back to 490. 491, we already know what happened. 491, it went to 475. I'm going to show you guys or sneak, a sneakier pivot, right? I'm gonna give you guys a sneakier pivot back to the upside, uh, back to the downside from, from the 503 level. Uh, Boeing, you know, this is the big move here. Uh, Boeing, if it builds below, uh, can flush. And I said the first target today was, was 133. And the reason where I said 133, so 138 was the pre-market low, right? Put in, it put in the low and then rallied. And, and then it remounted, right? It remounted the area right over here. Everybody see this uh, 130, uh, one, excuse me, it was 139. 139 was a sneaky pivot. Everybody see it, right? Once it started building below the 139, I said this, there's a shot, right? There's a shot as to get to the 10-day moving average of 133. Here was 133, right? Here, everybody see this 10-day moving average? And that's the whole point of why I say 10 days is a very, very important level, right? It sliced through that 10-day moving average like it wasn't even there. And it went all the way down to like 130. And that's obviously going to be a big pivot for tomorrow. Because again, any confirmation of Boeing tomorrow below that 130, you can see how much room uh, you have down. So Boeing, obviously, congratulations for all you guys uh, who took Boeing. Uh, big move there. Uh, Netflix actually had a pretty, pretty, pretty good upside move in the morning. I... It's not that I missed the trade. There was no liquidity for me. There was zero liquidity for me on Netflix, but 374, 375 needs to build for upside scalp. And, you know, they got upgraded by Bernstein, right? They got upgraded by Bernstein. Here was the, here was the 70, what was it? Here was, here was the pivot right here, right? So here was the pivot right here. And it went up like three and a half, four dollars. Again, unfortunately for me, it was just way too thin. It was trading like at an 80, 90 cent spread, 100 share lots. No, nothing I could do with that thing. But again, if you did catch it, uh, good job there. Just unfortunately, uh, I missed it. Uh, Roku, uh, Roku had a nice move up. Uh, oh, excuse me, before Roku, uh, I still like it. It stopped right at 63. Uh, 63 on BYND still needs to confirm. I, I like the setup for tomorrow. Uh, Roku, nice little trade there. Uh, 8520 needs to build. Got rejection uh, two times. And again, everything that I, if you guys notice, I was talking about for the scalp, for the scalp for the upside. Because again, I didn't believe that we were going to rally just for scalp. So 8520 needs to build uh, to the upside on Roku. Right, so here is Roku uh, 8520. Hold on, 8520. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, 8520. Yeah, right here. You see this right here? 8520. So, again, if you believe in the theory of stock straight from supply to supply, demand to demand, here was 8520 and it went right into supply of 8650. Again, scalp only. That's the only thing I was saying to the upside. Uh, scalp only, right? 85.20. Again, take this move. Take this move. Uh, nice flush. Uh, nice flush on the video. Uh, I shorted this thing second entry perfectly. Um, here was the two night two. Here was the 254. Fl uh, here was the 254 flush on Nvidia, right? So here's the 254 right here, right? So here's the 254 right here. And again, pretty smooth. You know, pretty smooth move. Uh, gave you know, gave about a dollar dollar fifties or so. Um, gave a dollar fifties move, excuse me, gave about a two dollar move and then snapped right back before it completely, completely got destroyed uh, in the afternoon session. Um, again, perfect. I had perfect move from supply to supply, demand to demand. So here's, and again, I kept on putting higher, as you, if you'll notice, I kept on putting higher pivots on Tesla because I saw it just wasn't rallying. It wasn't rallying at all. And I said, hey, look, here's the levels. 499 and 491. Again, 491 continues to be important. Okay. And I kept on saying, take flow on everything. 
uh, Microsoft obviously see. So here's the one that, that basically started it all. I go, 503 is a sneaky area. If it builds below, it can flush. It can see lows. Now the low of the day was 501. So here is Tesla. And this is basically what started off the whole, the whole move. And again, I know a lot of you guys caught really the whole move. I mean, congratulations. Again, for your option players, just a wonderful job. Just a really, really wonderful job. Uh, great, great job here, guys. So here was the, you know, here was the 503, right? 503 took out the 501, took out the 500, took out the 497, right? These are all levels I was putting into the channel. And then it took out the 491, right? It took out the 491 lows, right? The 491 lows from a couple of days ago. And I said, there's a shot this thing gets to 475, uh, 476, the low of the day is 475. So just a huge move, huge, huge move there uh, on Tesla. Uh, again, take on the way down. Uh, Boeing, again, take on the way down. And I kept on saying it just kept, you know, throughout the whole day, just keep scalping, you know, just keep scalping it down. Again, for some reason, a lot of especially new traders believe that every single trade needs to be $20. Look, is every single trade going to be a $20 move on Tesla, $20 move on this one, $10 move on Boeing? No, but take on the way down. If you accumulate throughout the day and you keep on taking cash flow and be responsible, you're going to have a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty nice little nest egg towards the end of the day. So again, be responsible and be smart. And again, not every single trade needs to be the five run homer. Again, Boeing destroyed, um, Boeing destroyed, again, and I kept on saying, under 497 could see 493. And then under 493, I saw it's gonna see 491. And 491, line in the sand, and that's where it got uh, completely destroyed. Again, Elon Musk, again, I'm a baby. Uh, fantastic, uh, and that's it. And, I, and, I, and again, here was kind of my, and here was kind of my echoing uh, for the traders, uh, you know, again, because for pri prior videos, I kept on saying this is a new market and we need to, uh, you know, we need to be very, very conscious of our mental health. And I kept on saying, um, you know, I really kept on saying that, you know, look, if you did really, really well with Tesla, with Boeing, consider the taking the rest of the day off. OK, it, you know, the, the morning value, that three, three and a half hour window that we have every single day, that is the value. That is the meat and potatoes. Right. Um, that, that's where you want to make your bones. So, you know, today I took Boeing, made some money on Boeing, made some money on Tesla, uh, made some money on the video, and, and I was good with that. And I was absolutely good with that. I went around two o'clock, I logged off, I went to play some basketball, got home, well, got home, well, came back to my house, took a shower, relaxed, did my chart work, recorded the video. Again, I'm fresh into tomorrow. Because again, the last thing you want to do is burn yourself out. So tomorrow, guys, uh, pretty basic stuff, right? Pretty basic stuff. If you're charting tonight and you have nothing to do with the, the webinar or whatever the case may be, look at your charts. Anything that closes on or below the 10 day moving average today, I know a lot of you guys don't use the 10, but just kind of a piece of advice, anything that closes on or below the 10 day moving average today, if you're doing your chart work and confirms tomorrow prices, those are going to be the better value. It doesn't make a difference what you trade, that 10 day moving average, the most underutilized pieces of equipment that a lot of traders don't use, okay? I'm telling you, it's been an excellent, excellent um, tool in, in, my, in, in, my, uh, in my toolbox for many, many years, and you'll, you'll really, really enjoy uh, the results. Guys, have a great, great night. God bless, stay safe, stay sane, and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations Cheers. for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.